Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video and today I'm going to be doing my June wrap up and telling you about all the books I read in the month of June. So in June I read 12 books, 4 of those were books I read for work, I work in publishing and the other 8 are books I can tell you about today. Um, June was a bit of an odd reading month, in the first half of the month I didn't get very much read, um, I was having a busy time at work and sort of struggling to concentrate on what I was reading, but then in the second half of the month I've read some wonderful things, so I do have some exciting books to tell you about today. And let's start off as always with the classics, my Victorian read for the month was The Ten of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte, I actually listened to this on audiobook rather than reading this copy um, and this was a reread for me I think this is my third time reading The Ten of Warfare Hall and I was reading it as part of Marissa from Blatantly Bookish's Bronte project and I'll link down below more information about that and this was a really wonderful reread actually I'd forgotten quite how much I love The Ten of Warfare Hall this is the story of two people Gilbert and Helen um, at the beginning of the book we're following Gilbert um, and what happens when in his local neighborhood a new woman called Helen Helen Graham moves into Wildfell Hall. She is the tenant there, she doesn't seem to want to talk to anyone, um, no one really knows what her story is, where she comes from. Um, Gilbert is slowly falling for her, but he doesn't know where she comes from either, um, and there are lots of rumours circulating in the neighbourhood. And then after the first like third of the book, um, we get to see from Helen's perspective and learn a bit more about her life as well. There are a lot of reasons why I love The Tenant of Wildfell Hall. It is a wonderful read in many ways. It really interestingly looks at kind of like social pressure, um, the position of women at the time period, it examines a marriage really interestingly, it looks at alcoholism in a really interesting way, it looks at like scandal and gossip and reputation and it's just a really fascinating novel. I feel like Anne Bronte does themes fantastically um, and The Tenant of Wildfell Hall is just a wonderful novel for that and I just really really enjoyed it and it was so nice to reread it again because it's been a while since I last read it and I had forgotten quite how much I love The Tenant of Wildfell Hall. Another classic I read in June was Cherie by Colette. This is a early 20th century French classic. This was something that was on my TBR for the 1900 to 1950 readathon that I didn't manage to get to in May so I decided to read it in June and I really didn't get very much out of this. This is a very short book and it's about um, the relationship between a very young man called Cherie and an older woman um, who has been his mistress. But she has been a Fairly, I think she thinks of herself as a courtesan um, for quite a long time and she has had this kind of six year relationship with um, this man Cherie since he was in his like late teens, I think since he was like 18 or 19 and he is now in his mid 20s um, thinking about getting married um, and it's about you know the complicated dynamic between um, his mistress and his new wife. Um, and I just really didn't get very much out of it. It's only about 100 pages and I feel like I didn't find it very interesting and I didn't really kind of engage with any of the characters or really care about what was going on. And I don't know whether that was just um, my frame of mind, like I said, I feel like I was having a little bit of a reading slump at the beginning of June, um, or whether that was just that I really didn't gel with the book. Um, but I was quite looking forward to it because I'd heard great things about Colette and I didn't really impress me very much. Um, so I would like to read more by Colette in the future, you know, she's a very well respected, um, much beloved French writer, um, but this one was not was not very much for me. I also read in June Company in the Evening by Ursula Orange, this was another novel which was left over from my 1900 to 1950 readathon TBR, and this is a British classic from the 1940s about a divorced woman called Vicky who's living with her um, young daughter and her sister-in-law, and her sister-in-law is living with her because um, Vicky's brother has died in the war and um, so she ends up taking in her sister-in-law who is 15 years younger than her and she has nothing in common with and um, because her sister-in-law is expecting a baby and has nowhere else to go and it's about their kind of complicated family dynamic and also what happens when Vicky runs into her ex-husband um, and they kind of begin a friendship again. I really really enjoyed this, this is a really good fun novel that is very readable and um, really enjoyable with great characterization and kind of interesting exploration of social position of women at this time period um, and also like a look at how the war affects everything because the war is happening throughout this book but it's not something Vicky talks about a lot but you can see how kind of like strain and worry is kind of all kind of heightened by the war. I also really enjoyed the fact that Vicky works for a literary agency and talks a lot about her um, work 
in the agency working with writers um, and also like how she balances her home life and her work life basically um, and how that was more complicated when she was married um, and how you know some people would have expected her to not work when she was married but that was very important to her and everything like that and I feel like that was a really interesting element of the book um, that I really enjoyed um, especially I think because I work in publishing it was quite fun to read about someone working in that industry in the 1940s um, so I really enjoyed this it was a really great fun read very very delightful um, I just yeah one I would highly highly recommend moving away from the classics into more modern literature this month I read Transcendent Kingdom by Yar Jassy this is the second novel by the author of Homegoing which was one of my favorite novels of last year and I really really enjoyed this one it was such a great read it was very different from Homegoing um, and I think I was expecting something slightly different possibly I don't know I would say that one this is um, contemporary set this is not a historical novel um, in the way that Homegoing is although Homegoing is sort of a collection of interconnected short stories but Homegoing is historical and this is not but also I feel like this was much more literary than Homegoing and I don't know if that's partly just because Homegoing is historical so it has a slightly different feel but I feel like this novel is much more like internal and psychological and I would definitely define this as literary fiction and I wouldn't have said homegoing was literary fiction which is interesting um but that's kind of beside the point I really enjoyed this um, I know I sometimes say that I don't love literary fiction but this was the kind of literary fiction that I very much enjoy this novel is about a woman called Gifty she's in her um, mid to late 20s I think um she is a scientist um, and she is working at her lab um, and one day her mother comes to stay um her mother um is not very well she's having mental health problems so she comes and lives in Gifty's flat and she's basically just staying in bed all the time not getting up and while Gifty's mother is staying Gifty is looking back on her life um, and her relationship with her mother um, and especially about what happened to her family as a child she says you know from the beginning we know that when she was a very little child there were four of them her parents her and her brother and we know that now it's just her and her mother and, and the rest of their family is not around Gifty's parents were both born in Ghana as was her brother but she she was born in America um, so the novel is also about kind of like nationality in some ways and how kind of growing up in America affected both her and her brother. There was so much in this novel that I loved it's really really beautifully written and it's really really cleverly done like this book jumps around in time so much there are so many different flashbacks and so many different moments in time that are explored but it's one of those books where it's done so well that you always know where you are in time and you always have a clear idea of how old Gifty is in these flashbacks um, and somehow just all of these different threads weave together to create this like wonderful story and um, that is so rich about this family um, and about Gifty um, and all of the characters feel so rich and so real I really really love this it was so beautifully written and so sort of moving and powerful in different places with like wonderful exploration of its themes in such a clever way yeah I just love your Jassy and um, I can't wait to read more by her in the future I can't wait to read everything she ever writes I do hope she writes more historical fiction in the future though because though I love Transcendent Kingdom I didn't love it as much as Homegoing because I love historical fiction and I just wanted some more history in there um, but I really hope that she does write more historical fiction as well as more contemporary set fiction in the future because yeah I love this a lot but I still love him going more. Talking of historical fiction, I read four historical novels in the month of June. Um, the first two um, are Afterlives by Abdul Razak Gurnak and The Tolstoy Estate by Stephen Conte. Both of these books were longlisted for the Walter Scott Prize for historical fiction um, and I have done a dual review of them so I'll link that down below and I won't talk about them too much here. Afterlives is set in the early 20th century in the part of Africa that is now Tanzania but wasn't then um, following various characters kind of before, during and after the First World War and um, especially looking at the kind of First World War's impact on a few different characters and, and a particular family. There were some things about this that I really enjoyed. I thought it was very historically interesting. I liked the characters, especially the kind of central relationship that comes into the fore in the second half of the novel. But I didn't really love the writing. It was um, that kind of third person narrative style that is very, very distant from the characters and very like pulled back. And so I felt like I couldn't really connect with the characters and like get into their heads because the writing kind of kept me at um, however much removed. So I sort of enjoyed some aspects of it, but it wasn't exactly for me. Um, I didn't really 
Joe with the writing style, um, but it was still an interesting read. And then the other Walter Scott Prize book I read this month was um, The Tolstoy Estate by Stephen Conte, which I listened to on audiobook. This was a really interesting read um, and one that I really enjoyed actually. It is set um, during the Second World War um, in Russia, following a man called Paul Bauer who is in the German army. He is a surgeon um, and it's set at the Tolstoy Estate. So this is something that actually happened during the Second World War and um, the German army took over the place where Tolstoy used to live and used Tolstoy's house um, as a military hospital. And that's something that actually happened. This novel is kind of a the fictional account of the events that took place at, on the Tolstoy estate um, during the Second World War with this military hospital. And we're following specifically the relationship between this German surgeon and a Russian woman who is like the caretaker of the house, basically. Um, she's looking after Tolstoy estate and she refuses to leave. And they kind of form this friendship in the midst of this terrible, complicated situation that means that, of course, they can't possibly be friends or more because they're in the midst of this absolute madness and chaos. It's a really, really interesting read with fascinating themes, a really kind of interesting, complex look at the psychology of all of the characters. And I also really liked the fact that um, there's like a thread of war and peace going throughout all of it. Um, Bauer is reading War and Peace throughout the novel. And him and Katarina talk about it, and there's a lot of kind of references to War and Peace throughout it, which is something that I really enjoyed. So it's a very, very interesting read, um, one that I haven't heard much about, but I would highly recommend. Um, and yeah, just a very, very interesting historical novel. It was great. And then I have two more historical fiction books that I read in the month of June. Um, one was In the Skin of a Lion by Michael Ondaatje, which I didn't really get on with. I think, to be honest, um, Michael Ondaatje is way too literary for me. Um, I didn't get very much out of this book because it didn't have very much plot and I like a plot and that's just entirely personal. I think there are a lot of people out there who love Michael Andate, um, but I think he's just not really a writer for me because he's just a bit too, a bit too literary. This novel is set in um, 1920s and 30s Toronto and it is about a man called Patrick um, and his relationship with two different women and also some other people. And to be honest, I don't feel like I really knew what this book was about and I don't feel like I could really get to the heart of it because it was very tangential and meandering and dreamlike and that is not what I love in fiction. I think that's just a very personal thing. It just is a bit, a bit too literary for me. Um, so yes, this was not one of my highlights of the month, but there we go. But my highlight of the month, my favourite book of the month and one of my favourite books of the year so far, would it beat The Binding? as my favourite book of the year so far, maybe? Maybe it'd be second? It would definitely, I think it would beat the Dictionary of Lost Words, much as I loved it. And that was The Kingdoms by Natasha Pulley, which was incredible. I think it would beat The Binding. This was so good. I love this so much. I love Natasha Pulley. Now Natasha Pulley is one of my favourite contemporary authors. I think she probably is my favourite living author tied with Diane Setterfield. And I just, I just love this so much. This was so good. This was as good as The Watchmaker of Fillinger Street. Do I mean that? Yes, I think I do. I loved it more than The Bedlam Stacks and The Lost Future of Pepper Harrow, which are the other two <laughs> books by Natasha Pulley. Um, I think I loved it nearly as much as The Watchmaker of Fillinger Street, which is Natasha Pulley's first book, um, which is the first book of hers that I read. I feel like sometimes you always have like a special place in your heart for the first book you read by a favourite author, because that was the first time you experienced that author's writing and like fell in love with their style. So I feel like The Watchmaker of Fillinger Street is always going to be my number one, but this was so good and this was just fantastic. Also, The Watchmaker of Fillinger Street, The Bedlam Stacks and um, The Lost Future of Pepper Harrow are all sort of linked. So The Lost Future of Pepper Harrow is a direct sequel to The Watchmaker of Fear Street and The Bedlam Stacks has a character in it who also appears in the other two books. So I would recommend reading those three in order, Watchmaker, Bedlam, <laughs> Pepper Harrow, um, but The Kingdoms doesn't have a connection to those three books at all so you can read this completely separate and you should, you should all read it, it's so good, it's so good. I should probably tell you what it's about but I really just want to tell you that it's amazing and that it made me like feel all the feelings that I like to feel when I read amazing books where you just don't want to do anything else but read the book because it's so good and where it just like entirely captures all of your emotions and like twists and turns them in all the best ways just so good and also one of the things I love about Natasha Pulley 
and this is going to be like half the video now it's just going to be talk about the kingdoms the thing that i love about natasha pulley so much i think is that her books are so fun and even though they were like really dark serious like scary dangerous moments of great peril in the kingdoms that are serious and shocking and violent at times even though there are those moments and she handles the serious theme so well her books are just so fun like this book has such like wonderfully fun quirky moments of just like pure enjoyment which are just you just have to love them like i feel like no few authors make me smile quite as much as natasha pulley when i'm reading her work because She's just obviously having fun with the world building and the themes and the characters in such a wonderful, wonderful way. And the way this book looks at like time and memory and history is so cool. Like she obviously takes her historical research so seriously as well, but also she's clearly having such fun with history and with writing about the past that you can tell Natasha Pulley loves history as you read her books. And I love that. I love that so much. Anyway, I'm gonna try and tell you what The Kingdoms is about. It's quite hard because it's sort of a fairly long way into the book before you really realise what's going on in the most wonderful way. Um, but I'll try and tell you. So this novel follows a man called Joe. Um, he is in his early 40s, I think, um, and he has no memories. Um, at the beginning of this book, he gets off a train and he doesn't remember anything except for his name. And he knows some things like he knows his way around London, sort of, but he doesn't know anything about his life um, and he doesn't really understand what's going on. He gets taken to a hospital and is told that he has suffered from a form of epilepsy, which has taken away his memories. But in the meantime, they will find his family and they'll restore him to where he should be. And he gets told that he is an English slave to a French family um, in London um, and he gets restored to the people who own him um, and carries on with his life from there. It soon becomes clear that this novel is set in an alternative version of England um, where Napoleon won the Battle of Waterloo or won the Napoleonic Wars. So England is ruled by the French and English people living in England are like mostly slaves or kind of lower working class. Everyone who is middle and upper class is French um, and we're following Joe in this world and one day he receives a postcard which says on it come home if you remember M nothing else and the postcard has been kept at the post office for a hundred years and he doesn't know why it's so cool this is the thing i love about natasha pulley it's just so fun the postcard has a picture of a lighthouse on it um, and by chance joe ends up getting the opportunity to go to this lighthouse so he goes to this lighthouse to try and work out what happened to him um, and why he has no memories and why this postcard has been sent to him and then everything goes on from there but like five times as cool as what i've just said i can't explain like how good this book is i can't explain all the things it explores because I don't want to like ruin it for you because it's so great when you're reading it to discover how complicated and wonderful everything is and the way this book plays with time and history is fantastic the way this book looks at memory as a theme is wonderful. Memory is one of my favourite themes in books and it's done so well in here. The characterization and like the exploration of like character and personality and what like it means to be a person and it means to be a particular person and an individual is so cool in here. And the characters themselves are just amazing. Joe is a wonderful character. Kite, my favourite character, like one of my favourite characters ever created now love him so wonderful agatha too is wonderful all of the minor characters are just fantastic and i just i just love it i just think it's so good and so wonderful and just yeah obviously i've already a little bit compared it to the binding um because the binding was previously my favorite book of the year and has the kingdom unseated it possibly they're currently like joint number one but also i think if you like the binding you will really really like the kingdoms because it plays with memory in a very similar way um and i think if you enjoy how the binding plays with memory and history you will really really enjoy how the kingdoms plays with memory because it's wonderful and i just i just loved it and it just has like the most emotional moments i feel like natasha pulley somehow i don't know if she just has a very similar sense of what is poignant to me but i find her book so poignant and i feel like she does like really emotional moments so brilliantly and also i just i just feel so invested in every character in this book and i feel like there are not very many writers who can make me that emotionally invested and also it's like set in 19th century england but it plays with what it, the 19th century is in so many wonderful ways and it's just so good it's so i just i just loved it so much i just i just thought this was incredible and you should all go and read it now and it's so good and i just yeah 
I love it, I love it. I can't wait for everything that Natasha Pulley ever writes because I know I'm just gonna love everything she ever writes, ever. I'm gonna stop now because I could just carry on for another 10 minutes just saying that The Kingdoms is brilliant, but that probably wouldn't be as exciting for everyone else watching as it would be for me. So I'm gonna stop now, but really, 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 really read this. Really, I mean it. Thank you very much um, for watching my slightly rambly June wrap up. Please let me know down in the comments what you read in June and um, what you especially enjoyed. Um, and that's it. Thank you very much for watching and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video. Mm -hmm.